Welcome to EdTechX Stories. My name is Benjamin Vidwen Cloquet. I'm CEO and co-founder of EdTechX Holdings and partner at Ibis Capital. EdTechX Stories is a short weekly interaction with CEOs, founders, investors, and innovators shaping and making the future of education and work. So welcome to EdTechX Stories, and I hope you enjoy our next session. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pierre Duberc. I'm uh, the co-founder and the CEO of Open Classrooms. I was born in 1988 in Normandy in France. I currently live in, uh, in Brooklyn in, in, in the States. Um, so I've been uh, spearheading uh, the development of Open Classrooms for the past 20 years now. And I'm here to talk about uh, the future of education, the future of work, Open Classrooms and mission-driven companies and B Corp companies. Pierre, welcome uh, to EdTechX Innovator Stories. It's one of those weird things where two French people are speaking English, uh, but let's do it. Uh, you know, before, all right. <laughs> before we talk about business, let me start with um, a personal question. H how did you end up in that position? Uh, is there, I mean, a, a defining moment in your life or someone you met uh, that inspired you to found basically a, a leading education technology business? So I'd say um, my co-founder, Mathieu, and I have uh, a non-traditional uh, story because we started Open Classrooms eight years ago, but we started before Open Classrooms, we started exactly the same, but um, it was not a business, it was a personal project we initiated back in 1999, so that's more than 20 years ago when we were very young, age of 11 and 13 years old in middle school. Um, so I'd, I'd say the person I met I kind of changed the trajectory of my life is Mathieu, uh, my co-founder, because obviously we started uh, working together and, and, and it's been the case for 20 years. And in, in middle school at this stage, we created together first online courses on web development and coding. Um, so it was back in France at this time, so in French, and it became the reference platform to learn coding in French. And we did so prior to your studies for many, many years um, in middle school, in high school, in college, and it was not a company, there was no business model. So we, we were doing that just to help help people, really. So I'd say uh, meeting Mathieu, but also I was I was definitely a bit bored I, at school. I, I didn't really enjoy the courses I had or the, the pedagogy and the way I was taught. Um, it was it was too academic, it was too traditional. So it also inspired us to create the courses we wish we'd had at school. So instead of dropping off school, you stayed at school, but you created your own business, which is uh, you know even better, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, in, in our world, so we <clears throat> we were living in the south of France, in the countryside, really. I was I was in a village of like 18, 1800 inhabitants. And and um, we, we didn't come from, you know, um, a family of entrepreneurs and and uh, top managers or, or business leaders. So um, to us, the project was not really a job. It was just a hobby. So I, at no moment we had this conversation to say, oh, we should maybe drop out of school. Uh, no, because for us, school was school and this project was something else. So it was not, it was really not, uh, conflicting, and it's only at the very end of our studies we realized, oh, maybe you know it could become a job, and we decided to create open classrooms at this. And you've done a good job at it because you know you you built it to uh, with your co-founder and your team to to a size, and you know uh, it has now unicorn status. And you know why do you think you've been um, successful here in you know not only scaling but also getting the funding and the support? Uh, I see in Europe so many early stage um, ed tech companies that are really struggling with this and you've done it very well. And so wh why do you think you've been different and what you've done differently, you think? I think one word is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it takes time uh, to change things in education, especially education is kind of a slow moving market. Um, so it, it took us a while, actually, you know, at, at some point, if you don't know in classrooms, you might like approach it and say, oh, it's kind of overnight success, you know, but actually, well, yeah, you've you... been working on that for 20 years, <laughs> yeah. um, eight years, eight years as a business, 
um, you know, it's not what I would describe as an overnight success. Mm-hmm. I mean, my experience of it is quite the opposite. Like we walk as a lifelong achievement. Really yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very. It, it was to me, it was very long and very hard, and and much longer than what I, I anticipated. Um, so I say perseverance and just make sure you persist is kind of uh, my <laughs> top advice. I think most people who succeed, succeeded um were just you know um the ones who didn't quit basically yeah. <laughs> some, somehow um that's one and then after i could obviously tell you uh, all about the great product we have the fact we sell to employers or a partnership product the, the fact we have our own degree awarding powers the, uh, the fact that we match uh, employers needs in terms of the uh, skills that they need, the competencies they need, the jobs they need. Um, so all, all of that, but but truly we did so because we iterated month after month, um, year after year, um, until we really found uh, the right product market fit and it kind of uh, exploded yeah. completely into this like triple digit cross rate company. Um, so it's very exciting, but, um, but I would stay very humble like we, we, we just try really hard and thought a lot yeah. about it until we found the way, but we didn't know when we started. So great is good in a way. Uh, yeah, it can be good. Yeah, it's not yeah. always good. <laughs> uh, you, you often say Open Classroom is a mission-driven company. And, and what does that mean? And, and are not all companies or founders mission-driven in a way? Well, yes and no. Um, I think in 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 North Star as you understand it's kind of atypical right to start a project for 10 years and then make it a business um so I, i'd say the mission of open classrooms first of all is to make education accessible uh it's ingrained in the dna of the company really for a while and it's not something that we kind of added on top of and and uh try to you know um make sure that we're aligned to the ESG trend uh, of the world. But um, I, I do think obviously it's not uncommon. There are many companies um, uh, which were started by founders that were uh, driven by mission and purpose, and, that, and that's great. Um, I think it, it changes quite a bit. I think intent matters, uh, you know? Um, so if you're there to make education accessible or change, you know, uh the healthcare system or, or you know so, something that is good uh for communities for the world uh for the environment maybe um it it's um it's compelling um i think it's also um important for employees for the employer's brand you know uh people want to join companies with a purpose they want they want to have a meaningful job a meaningful contribution and impact to the world and to the people around them. Um, but it's also important to your clients, to your stakeholders, even to investors now, more and more investors are willing to invest in you know, impact investment or ESG compliant uh, companies. So it's becoming more and more of a need, to be yeah. honest, mm-hmm. as a business. So I, I'm pleased to see that. Um, but yeah, for us, what, what it, it means is that we are very intentional on what we want to achieve, what is our North Star, is the mission, um, especially is to make professional education accessible, so education leading to jobs, so it's this education to employment product that we're passionate about. And the way we track it is through the number of students we place in the workforce. So that yeah. means young people for their first job, job seekers to get job to, to get back to the market, but also working adults to get a promotion or a mobility. Uh, we track that very thoroughly, and this is what drives our strategy or decisions or product roadmap and all of that is not the top line. It should be uh, a consequence of or mission. So, so what in 10 years would you say is mission accomplished? If one day you say, look, I'm done here, I've done what I had to do, what would that be? How would you measure that? Um, so uh, the, the, the big target that we set, the big ambition in terms of our mission is to place 1 million students a year mm-hmm. in the workforce. Yeah. 
uh, and and that's in kind of five years time. Okay. Um, not in ten years time. So yeah. Yeah, we would be basically a college training, like a, a million students graduate, all graduating, and all finding a job every every year. So that that would be the good size mindset. of the ambition. Yeah, in terms of social impact, okay. we want to have. Let me ask you a question. I assume you're a lifelong learner. Yep. So what what are you learning right now? I just started a program on open classrooms, actually on um, leadership skills and especially on uh, leading people through change. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So it's a yeah yeah it's a set of courses and a project. I have I have one on one mentorship sessions every week. I, I'm a student on open classroom, so I, I have the full experience. Um, and it's been uh, designed in collaboration, partnership with Stanford University. So it's pretty, very pretty, cool. um, yeah, very cool um, training program, actually. <laughs> very cool. So let me uh, move to the next part of the interview. So it's what I call rapid fire questions. You're going to have to answer by A or B. Um, they're meant to be hard questions. You can't say both. Okay. So are you ready? Yes. Degree or skills? Skills. Okay. Grit or grades? <laughs> I said grit earlier, so I'm okay. going to speak to it. Uh, remote work or every day in the office? Uh, remote. Okay. State school or private school? Um, state school. Profit or impact? Impact. Learners or shareholders? Learners. Teacher or technology? um teachers okay french tech or u.s tech <laughs> uh, french tech you know okay w wait for the next I'm one french. <laughs> french vcs or u.s vcs uh, <laughs> that's tough <laughs> u.s vcs <laughs> very good thank you for your honesty um you know one more question now who would you like to nominate to be part of the next edtechx innovator stories and tell us why maybe in, in 10 30 seconds I wanted to uh, suggest um, Non Ma is the um, co-founder and CEO of Numeraid, um, which is a net tech company uh, in California, um, working on um, um, bringing basically videos of content uh, to help uh, college students, um, you know, without textbooks and the AI-based uh, tutoring that is fully online, kind of a really modern approach. Um, of you know um, tutoring and textbook um, in in higher education, uh, they have admirable, remarkable traction, and I think it's a really exciting product. Okay, so we're looking forward for the introduction, please. And Pierre, thank you very much. I enjoyed it very much. That was Pierre Dubuc, CEO and co-founder of Open Classroom for EdTechX Innovator Stories. Thank you, Pierre. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye.